Yeah, no worries, Nikki. You was my sister. You was giving me too much credit, though. Because I don't do nothing. I just read a verse and say what I'm grateful for and just take what I get out of it. But thank God. And I'm just happy that you actually um, get some utility out of my words and Dira's words are, you know, anything that you, you get out of here. That's what this room is for, you know. So thank God. Uh, this morning I want to read from the book of Second Timothy 4 and 2, which says, Preach the word of God. Be, be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. And today, I'm just grateful for, you know, life, health, strength. I'm um, grateful for my wife and my children and um, just grateful for opportunities, you know. Um, this particular verse is... Um, I don't know really why I shared it, but it's it, it. Actually, I do. Like one one keyword stood out to me, right? Which was patiently correct, right? This in this particular verse, right? He tells us that we must preach the word of God, right? And be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Meaning that, you know. A lot of times, like, you can have an opportunity to, to, to give people a little, you know, piece of the word of God, right? And it may not seem like like the ideal situation, right? Like, and when I say that, it'd be like, for instance, you could be in a situation where you're around somebody who grieving, right? And a lot of times, persons would get a bit timid around those situations, and you know what I mean? They... They don't really want to preach the word of God. And it ain't really necessarily about preaching the word of God, right? But it's about how you come across. You know, you could you could gently remind persons that, hey, listen, man, you know, God don't make mistakes. You know what I mean? That's still preaching the word of God. You know what I mean? Like you could see somebody in an adverse situation and you may not be able to help as much as you could. But you could say small things. It's like, hey, you know what I mean? The little that God has blessed me with, I'm blessing you with. You know, like it's it's the small things that you do that where you could still preach the word of a cross and you could get the message or um um or out to people. You know what I mean? And he tells us in this verse as well too, he says to patiently correct. And you know that that was something that I think um a lot of Christians sort of missed the mark with, right? where we sometimes would get frustrated with persons that we love or persons who are close to us. You know what I mean? When they sort of don't connect to the, or, or we feel as though they aren't as connected to the source as us, you know? And it might be through the fact that they may be living a sinful life. You know, it might be through the fact that, you know, they, they do some things that, that hurt me. You know what I mean? But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us to patiently correct, you know, cause, because, you know, it's so easy to go there and without patience and, and try to be like this disciplinary in the persons and just slam your fist down, right? Because that will make us feel good. But will it do, what is, what would be the effect of that on them? You know, that's why the word of God tells us to patiently correct. We have to go into our corrections. It didn't say don't correct. Remember this now, I didn't say don't discipline them or don't correct them when we see them being wrong or just let them live and do their will and do their way. No, it says to do it with patience. And with, when, with patience comes humility. Sometimes when in, our, in us correcting persons, we have to humble ourselves in that process because we've already, if we allow their actions to anger us, then what kind of Christians would we be? You know what I mean? And you know what it also tells us after this? It not only says to patiently correct, but it says to rebuke it, right? Meaning that, that those ways of those sins of that person, that you rebuke those in the name of Jesus because you know sometimes the things that are going on in their life, they may not understand and they may not see it, but they may be fighting against spiritual battles and don't even know about it. They may be having demons or the enemy taking charge of their life and they don't even see it. So the Bible, the word of God tells us to rebuke that, you know, not only patiently correct it, because we got to understand that some, because we connected to the source, 
because we have a closer relationship also means that we have a little bit more knowledge of how things work in the spiritual realm. And sometimes some persons do some things and they don't even realize that this isn't them doing these things. Or it is them, but they have been heavily influenced by the enemy. And what it also tells us, right, and this is what I love the most about it and one of the reasons why I wanted to share this particular verse. It says, encourage your people with good teaching, right? By this is what I mean is that you live a Christ-like life. Be the example for your family. Be the person with patience in your family. Be the person that rebukes the wrong in your household. Be that person that when somebody looks at on how to be a good Christian or how to be a Christian, you are that example. We all fall short of the glory of God, everyone. We can sin. We can make mistakes. We can, we can mess up every once in a while, you know? But it's how we fix those mistakes that count. When we go back to God and we say, God, listen, I, I humble myself before you. I'm sorry I made a mistake. You know, these is self-correction. These are the things that we want our children to see about humility and about kindness and about patience and about encouraging each other. These are the lessons that we want people to see. But the only way people can see them is if they see them through us being the teachers. You know, and when you was in school... <laughs> When you was in school, you didn't go into the classroom and learn math from somebody who didn't have a higher education in that, you know. That same person who taught you math, whether it was in primary school or whether it was in high school, they dedicated time to becoming a math teacher. And it's the same way if you want to teach or show someone how to be a Christian, you have to dedicate time to that. That's patience and humility. And it's about, just like what the Word of God told us just now, it's about you being prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. If your family sees you collapsing, when things go bad, what do you think they can do? What example did you set? You praise God in front of your family when things go bad and whether things go good, when things go bad, what you do, whose model do you think they can follow? When they see you going through things in the first, that's why the verse tells us. It says, preach the word of God, whether it is favorable or not, you know, meaning you don't just praise God when things good. No, when things bad, we praise God too. <laughs> Nothing changing around here, you know, and that's just what it is. We have to be the teachers. We have to be the examples because guess what? This is the, what I'm going to close off with. So I'm so thankful to see my sister Lavette in here. You never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. Let me give you all a short story. I, as you all know, I've been sharing these Bible verses, what I get from Joel Austin, my daily devotional, every morning. I've been doing this for many years now, right? I, I would say probably seven, eight years, maybe, right? Maybe exaggerating, probably at least six though, right? And um, one of my friends, associates, right? He never is like him now, don't get me wrong. I, I never see him like him. You know, a lot of other people like him, you know. Um, but he stopped me, and I haven't seen him in a long time, but he stopped me the other day. And he told me, he was like, hey man, listen, don't stop sharing those devotionals. You know, he's like, they really helped me through a rough time, right? Now mind you, imagine if I had stopped sharing those because no one clicked like. You know, imagine if I didn't want to share this word of God because I was going through a bad time and I was going through something and I felt like I was being ignored and these didn't make no sense and no one was paying attention to them. Then that message would have never get across whatever the message was he'd receive. So just to be reminded, guys, as Christians, that like we never know who watching us. Like we never know who depending on our faith. We never know who out there just holding on to us and holding on to life by a thread and just asking themselves daily, like, boy, I wonder what Sister Levette would do in this situation. Boy, I have to be strong like Sister Onika. Man, I got to get up and pray like Indira. You know, I got to wake up strong and, and consistent every day like Brother Demi and Mama Faith. You know, 
I got a whole firm in my scripture, like Sister Cheryl. Like you just never know who you may be influencing. So like the word of God tells us in this verse of 2 Timothy 4 and 2, remember this today, y'all. Preach the word of God and be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. And I'm Gary and I relinquish my mic.